What's going on guys? I have what I thought was going to be just a simple project and it is turning out to be a complete cluster. So I figured I'd bring in and show you what, what is that noise? Anyways, I figured I'd show you uh, what I'm working on and see if we can fix it. What is that noise? There, it stopped. Oh, for... What is that? It's irritating me. It's like somebody chewing with their mouth open. I don't know what it is, but something's in one of these trees and it is driving me insane. Listen to it. Carpet bomb that tree, something. All right guys, so here's the project that I was working on. I was gonna replace the spindle bearings uh, for the mola blades. Basically straightforward project, but it's turned into a cluster. The way you do it is you back off this nut. That'll leave an exposed shaft here. You put the nut on just by a few threads, hit the top of it. The shaft will come out. That leaves you with this. Remove your pulley. That'll expose a bearing there. And there's an opposing one on the underside of the deck that's the same. It has a number on it. You just drive the bearings out. You buy new bearings for three, four, five dollars a piece, put them in, quiets it right down. Well, that's turned into a huge cluster. This is what I have here. So after beating on it several minutes with a 30 ounce waffle face, it has uh, completely mushroomed out the nut. I was able to get the shaft to move down just a few inches. Got a few apprentice marks here of where I wasn't quite on where I needed to be. So that has completely snapped off the pulley. So now we're in two halves there. And now I've got it all mushroomed out so that I cannot push the rest of the shaft down through the lower pulley. So now I gotta grind this flush, get this pulley off, and we're gonna try to weld this pulley back together. I'm sure I'm not the only person that has one of these mower decks that has been unable to remove the pulley or done some damage. First thing I'm gonna do is grab a grinder, try to grind this flush so I can finish driving this shaft out of that housing. The top of that is that. So that's what you're looking at. Let's get going. So to give you an idea of how stuck this really was is that when I was actually hitting that nut, I was hitting it so hard that it actually pounded the nut over the shaft which completely wiped out all the threads on it and then I started hitting the shaft directly that's how it got mushroomed out now that I've ground off the mushroom on that I'm gonna center punch it get ready to drive this thing out Now here I'm just using a needle scaler, it's just uh, air powered. If I used this in the beginning, I probably wouldn't have had any of these problems that I'm having now, but live and learn, I guess. So look what's going on, guys. We were able to drive the shaft through the pulley, but now the shaft is stuck inside the upper and lower bearings. See how the bearings are loose within the housing? You can replace just the bearings, and that's what I want to do, but this shaft is seized right onto that bearing. Hear how loud that is? So that's kind of why I did it. This was this one was bad, so I figured if this one's bad, let's just replace all of them. If it won't go the first time, get a bigger hammer. There. And there we are. Took the bearing with it. All right, so we're back in the workshop, and I've cleaned them up a little bit. Got a couple concerns. I'm wondering why this is copper colored. So that almost seems like it was maybe brazed, copper brazed. Then we have this here, which is actually like a keyway that matches up to right there. So I'm gonna file that so we can get this pulley to go back on to that shaft and then we'll line up those what appear to be a keyway mark together and uh, take it from there. Copper is not magnetic and these are some of the filings that came off that bushing as I was uh, filing it down. 
so. Interesting. So all of that material that was on there just was attracted to this magnet. So that indicates to me that it's definitely not copper and it's not a brass. So I'm just cleaning it up uh, using the uh, flap wheel and now I'm just trying to do blast tacks on it, heating it up. You can see I'm not using any filler. So I'm just trying to basically uh, heat the two pieces of parent metal together, uh, just fusing them together by heat and see what it actually, uh, see how it actually responds and what it does. So unfortunately our repair was a failure. Now look right along there. You see that? Hopefully you guys can see that all the way around this. That's why I didn't add filler metal uh, Because I just wanted to try to fuse the two halves together and you can see there's a lack of fusion It cracked all the way around so it didn't work This is one of those parts that if you can't get it to fix right that thing is probably spinning hundreds of miles an hour I don't want that thing to go flying off and hurt somebody so for like 15 bucks We can order a new pulley Figure this would be just a good experiment if it worked great. Well, it doesn't, and we know that now, but we'd never know unless we tried, right? So uh, we know it doesn't work. Let's get some parts ordered and get this thing back together. So I've got all the, uh, oh my God, he, here's that thing again. I've got all the uh, spindles and blades out, and you can see that that's what comes out of them. So, unreal. Here you can see here, we're going to stick a drift down through there, punch the top bearing out, and then we're going to flip it over and punch the bearing out this way. Now, you can see how this spindle is also bad because that's where the blade, uh, the mower blade, engages on and there's just no real teeth. So what causes that is that the blade had loosened up over time on this and it stripped out that little keyway so the blade doesn't engage good now and this is the one that went you know on this on this one here so because the spindles bad the bearings are bad and just overall it's completely come apart I ordered a whole new um, spindle assemble assembly for this it was like I don't know it wasn't very much 25 bucks or so for here I just ordered bearings for these so we'll punch out these bearings, put new ones in it, and be good to go. So let's do that right now. Now, after I'm done driving these out, I did a modification to these new bearings and to the existing housings. I'm not sure how it's going to work, but I'm real curious to find out in the long run how it responds. Yeah, now we got the bearings all drove out of that. Huh, there's a tire and a wheel on the other side. Oh, wait. Never mind. After I get out all the bearings, I've got to start removing the bolts for the housing. Now, from what I understand, this is very uncommon that these bolts did not snap off in the housing. All right, so now we're just going to put some uh, never sees on the uh, hardware that we took out. Just in case if we ever got to replace it again, we can get it out. Ah, that must be pretty enjoyable listening to that... Uh, Whatever that thing is that's making that noise. I wish it would find a home elsewhere. So when I started to put these bolts through the new housing, uh, which is aluminum, I thought somebody might have messed up because the housing didn't have threads in it. Well, w upon closer inspection, the bolts actually are like a self-tapping bolt and they thread into the aluminum housing themselves. So I started them with the impact, but I'm finishing them out by hand be just because I don't want to break them. I want to make sure that, uh, that they're tight but not broken. And the never sees probably help lubricate them in. Now, here's the modification that I was talking to you about. Uh, they make these in a sealed, greasable uh, type housing. Well, I'm making my own. I'm not advocating that you do it because I don't know how it's going to work in the long run, uh, but I'm going to give it a try. So I've got the housings still in there. I'm tapping this out for a, uh, for a grease fitting, so I've drilled it and tapped it. Uh, then I'm going to clean the bore to the inside of that housing. And uh, my hopes are is that I can convert these to a greasable uh, type of housing. But in order to get the grease inside the bearing, I've actually got to remove the seals on one of the sides. 
Yeah, that's a sealed bearing. You can see it's got some clear grease in it. But we took that seal out because now we're going to make this a greasable bearing. It'll always uh, have plenty of grease applied to it. So now with our housings drilled out and grease fittings put in, it's time to put it back together with our uh, removed seal facing the inside on each of the bearings. Be sure you don't hit here. You'll damage it. Only hit the outside uh, surface. So I showed you guys just a little while ago how that bearing fit real sloppy and loose inside the housing, the existing one. Well, I went around this with a uh, center punch and just dimpled that aluminum housing all the way around it. And look how tight that bearing fits now. It fits in there real good. It fits like it should. So that should be a uh, good repair. Now I just got to uh, finish pulling the caps off the rest of the bearings and uh, get them back together. And I would say, actually, if you have a socket big enough, probably put them in this way. I think it might drive them in square. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that it could be done uh, using a small hammer, as long as you hit them on the outside. Just be careful, that's all. And while we're here, we might as well replace this, because this is bad also. Hear that? Let's grab the new one. Silent. So I put a little uh, dab of Never Seize on it and snug it down with the impact and we're good to go there. Time to uh, put the blades back in. Those fit nice. Uh, everything's going together uh, real nicely. And this is the side that has the uh, new spindle on it. Somebody had obviously uh, run this for a while and the blade got loose and it stripped out that shaft. But, so that's why we replaced that side. So now it's time to flip it over and start getting the pulleys back on here. So there's the uh, existing one. We'll get that one snugged down. Again, putting a little bit of Never Seize on it. You know, I, I probably will never have to take this apart, but someone down the road after I'm long gone may have to. And let's try to put some grease in this thing and see how these work. So far, so good. Uh, I've mowed the grass with it once uh, since this video has been out. And uh, I just squirted grease in these until grease started coming out a little bit around the shaft. I will probably, you know, grease these, you know, a couple, two or three times a season. And I think I should be all set. Now, here we go. Here's our new, uh, here's our new pulley that we uh, just got in the mail. So let's get this thing back together. So now you can see that uh, down in there. I don't know, maybe it was a press fit. I can't really tell. I like that sound in the background, though. And again, I'm just uh, slathering on a little bit of that Never Seize and getting the pulley on, snugging everything down, getting it all tightened up, make sure everything spins good and feels good. I did that with all the other uh, uh, pulleys too to make sure that I didn't have any strange sounds or anything like that. So now we got the belt back on, the tensioner seems to be working good, and it's time to get this thing back together. Uh, I feel like I've been working on this tractor forever, but uh, you know, pretty much. Almost everything's been replaced on it. I can't imagine I'll have any other problems with anything else. If you guys have been following along, you'll know that we've done a lot of work to this tractor. And, uh, you know, I'm not one to want to mess around with something over and over and over and have weekly breakdowns. And I don't presume that I will. Uh, I think we probably covered just about everything we could on this. Do it, guys. If you are trying to fix your pulley or weld them back together because you pried it off and it broke, uh, I would say that it can't be welded. Maybe it's a press fit. I don't know. Now, as far as drilling out those housings and putting in a grease fitting and taking the seals off your sealed bearing uh, to make them greasable, I'm not really recommending you do that because I don't really know in the long term what kind of effect that that is going to have on the bearing. So I guess if you decide to do it, just do it at your own risk. But I haven't uh, been using it long enough to be able to safely tell you guys, yeah, this works great. I think it's probably going to make sense to me, but uh, who knows? It may not work. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Thanks for tuning in. If you guys want to find out what I'm working on before it even makes it up to YouTube, you guys can catch me on Facebook and on Instagram. Until next week, guys, I want to thank you guys for watching. Have a good day. See ya.